What are we doing? I don't know. You're playing a game? Whoa. <laughs> hey, how's everyone doing? Tired. Why? What? You can't be tired. We just barely started. I can be. I can be tired anytime I want. I, su I suppose, but why would you want to? <laughs> hey, we, uh, so, uh, sorry for being a, a <clears throat> little bit late this, uh, this is actually September's um, patron pick for our Indie Power Hour. Going up in September as scheduled. Yes, uh, because we had nothing going on in our personal lives that would have caused us to choose between making an update and sleeping. And also being in horrible pain. And also being in horrible pain. I am in horrible pain. Um, but this month our patrons have selected uh, Zalavier Nesson Jr. Uh, who I had not heard of, but now that I've seen their games I'm like, oh, this looks really cool. Uh, so this first game uh, we're going to play, Can Androids Play, pr play, Can Androids Prey, actually has two different uh, variations, red and blue, uh, and it looks like the other one, so we're going to play both of them back to back, because we're cool. We're cool like that. Um, and it does not seem as if he is the only author on this one, so I want to make sure I get the correct co-author. Natalie something? Well, do, 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 do by Zalavia Nelson Jr., Natalie Clayton, and Natalie I believe Clayton. Ghoul Noise did the, um, yes, did the uh, music. Sweet. So, Let's this is going to be awesome. Next. Let's hop the heck in there. Are you ready to begin? Yes. <laughs> begin strips. <laughs> Please no. Yeah. Um, oh! Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Whoa! Whoa. This is... Okay, this is just doing it on its own. I'm not... Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. I think it's actually being spoken aloud. Oh. It's hard for us to tell because, as usual, we play with the sound way down to make sure that it doesn't... Because we're scrubs and don't have a good audio set up. Yeah, <laughs> we're working on it. <laughs> Someday. But damn, this is cool so far. What kind of, now, do you think this is just artistic coloring, or do you think that wherever we are is actually this color? I can't help but think that maybe it's just monochrome on, and, you know, to, to make it very stark. And I don't know. Are we on Mars? That's what I really want to know here. Are we on Mars? Will we be writing any outlaw wrongs on mars that is the most important question um oh i wonder what's up with god i haven't heard from him lately <laughs> he hasn't stopped by my store recently are you there god <laughs> it's me sk Just wondering what you whoa up oh, up oh, i have controls Oh, do you uh, control the horizontal and the vertical? I I might. Your fuel line is cut, dumbass. <clears throat> yeah. Hey. Fuck my giant metallic Fuck body. body. Fuck my giant metallic body. Oh, wait, no, I'll, I'll be Peters. Even if we didn't have to worry about corrosive air or not having supplies or not having long-range comms or not having shit fuck all when it comes to surviving past tomorrow, we're doomed. My arm servos are locked, Private. Judging from the condition of your mech, you aren't moving from that spot either. No matter what we do, what we say, what we want, your fuel tank's gonna blow us sky high. It'll happen just as the sun rises. Should be beautiful. 
wow, that's kind of bleak. But yeah. I like I like that very much as the setup for a uh, <laughs> as the setup for a uh, kind of one scene type dealio. Yep. Oh, why did you chase it? Why call him an it? They could have been a her. Okay, interesting point. Why did you chase her into a series of blind corridors? You sent us after a 40 G9 Buckshot H09 in a fucking canyon. Oh, Buckshot Hog, sorry. The mech has Buckshot in the name. What did you think would happen? I blame you. This is your fucking fault, Private. My name is Court, jackass. You don't want to go with one of the many different fuck yous? I like the one where we assert our identity. <clears throat> Wait, Jackass isn't the right android for this game. <laughs> okay. This is your fucking fault, Court. I do not want to die. I really, really don't want to die. If I was going to die anyway, I would have wanted to plan it would have eaten whatever I wanted. I would have tried one of those Burt classic programs instead of re-watching Mecha Mates. I would have tried reading at some point. Maybe not that last one. I... Having trouble with my imminent death. The civility filter seems to be picking up on that. On the bright side, I guess it will go before we do. Shit, I'm sorry. Want to know something funny? Sure, tell me. Your little stunt saved our lives. Temporarily, but still. You pulled me away from the engagement to chase that bastard. I saw something go off behind us. Didn't realize what it was until now. The Mercury Protectorate had a fucking anti-ferris bomb. MP sacrificed every unit they had in that crater to wipe us out. Probably melted us inside our suits. As far as deaths go, this isn't going to be so bad. Well, at least we're taking one of those MP fucks with us. Good riddance. Uh, uh... I'm not certain we did that. You know how Chain of Command works. When Captain Bornar went down, I had to pick up his... You know I asked for this detail. Volunteered to do something just once, and it kills me. Sure learned my lesson. I mean, fuck! Nobody thinks about the Mercury Protectorate. Command didn't project a single casualty. Vert networks were already fighting over the streaming rights. That's how much of a cakewalk this was supposed to be. We were supposed to stomp them. MPs aren't supposed to have enhanced mechs. MPs aren't supposed to have giant-ass bombs. Guess they do now, though. Look at me. can't even move my arms. Clearly, you can still chat. Wow, rude. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone ever tell you you got away with words, Court? Because they might have been lying. <laughs> I love, like, just the, the setting of this game. It's so very good. Yeah. We really are going to die, you know. The air in this sector is toxic. Without fuel or battery packs, our life support is going to run out. Also, you're going to explode, so that that's a problem. I used to call this planet Earth. I uh, watched documentaries about it. Sunsets were supposed to be beautiful. Now there's all this stuff in the air, the colors and light and stuff. It's to die for. Sounds nice. Wow. <laughs> you really are playing a pushover over there, you know that? <laughs> I am only doing gritty realism. Yeah, alright. Do you ever think about God?
sure. I think everyone does at some point. I think about God a lot. I try not to, but I do. There's this person thing that can see everyone and everything. Made good and evil. Made the universe. Con confusing. I keep thinking and trying to understand him and it's... God is... What do you think God is like? Does it matter? If you can't see him, if he doesn't bother to talk to you, let alone fix shit, why spend the effort? If God exists, then he's cruel. I don't want any part of that happen. Okay. I, I get where you're coming from. Here's the thing. I think God is terrifying. I'm used to being monitored and judged by people who don't give a fuck about me. We're in the military. we still got it easy. Shit, the Venusi... The... Venusian? Mm-hmm. Confederacy is just 1984 with an anime mascot. Oh, God. I get apathy. What scares me about God. What keeps me up at night is that, is that God might care. That he's seeing all of this, all of me, and has feelings about it. About all of us. Feelings we can't even comprehend. A sentient mind that processes fucking everything and can do something about it, and does do things, maybe, but... You can't tell when, or maybe you can, but you just, yeah, you, you, at night when I get out of vert, I look up at the stars and hope whatever eyes or eye that God has brushes over me. I feel ashamed for feeling that way, but it's true. Stop looking at me. Stop feeling. Please. Thank you for giving me a new fear. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's like, I hadn't considered that until now, but now that I have... No, I, I have. I just uh, took that one away. Thanks. <laughs> Something to worry about a couple hours from now when I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> you gonna be sassafras, or are you... I don't know. You gotta pick one. Uh, I think I know what you mean. All these questions, you know? Just nasty questions that just stick there. I'm not doing well, Courtney. Captain Bornar went down. I freaked out. Taught me everything I know about surviving. Not boot camp bullshit. That, that's conditioning. I'm talking about the stuff that gets you through this life after an engagement is over. The day after day. The stuff you used to help others do it, too. I couldn't believe that he was gone, and once I got to his body, I froze because I went through Cap's data log. It wasn't chain of command. I wanted something to remember him by, but I ended up finding... Ugh, fuck it. I've got some existentially terrifying news. How do you want to hear this? <laughs> 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 Soon ideally is really funny. <laughs> oh, too low. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Soon I... Sorry. I thought, that was, I thought that's what you were going for. Courtney, I think I know why we didn't really talk before this. You're an ass. I guess the first fuck you. Okay, you know what? The reason most people spend all their time in vert is because for every 1,000 soldiers deployed, seven are physical people. What? That's just enough free thought to keep any data processing centers from identifying attack patterns and slaughtering everything, while risking as few important lives as possible. Flesh and blood are scattered at random. So there's a good chance you aren't even real. There's a good chance everyone you've ever known and loved is a fucking simulation. There's a 1 in 43 chance that your life is a lie, and a 0% chance that anyone gives a shit. There. Take your soon and shove it. Holy shit. 
Yup. We open our airlocks, and we do have physical forms, we die. Air shot. If we don't have actual bodies, we'll still go out when these mechs do. But we won't know what we really are. We're going to live, die on a planet people don't even live on anymore. 2087, interstellar moving day for the United Continents. Trivia. I want a trivia night with that fact. I was at a bar. I remember writing down the answer on my tablet, so I ha so hard that the leather from the dirty booth was vibrating. Can't remember if it was invert or real. I, I didn't care. I. Why in the flying spectacular fuck did this happen? Why did I sign up for this? Why are we here? I. I'm so sorry for, for everything. Especially the mean stuff. I. Bornar could have told me. Could have just told me. I'm not crazy. Even if some of our conversation has suggested otherwise. I'm not crazy or irrational for thinking that if something exists beyond myself that I can't see or fully comprehend. <sighs> look at that sky. Just fucking look at it. I saw how small I am in this universe and thought, something has to fill all that empty space. Someone has to care about us. I do believe that, but now I'm looking up and... When we thumped here and what is basically our graves, I had one thought in my head. Can God hear circuits? It sounds pretentious and absurd, but I thought that. I felt tears on my cheeks and wondered if they were real. Just murdered a man or a machine or something, and crashing here next to his flaming corpse and wondering if God listens to computers. Why does he just drown out the buzzing? Let's say God isn't listening. Isn't that what you wanted? You can still be happy if he doesn't hear you. No, Courtney, I don't think I can. I'm opening my airlock when the sun rises. I'm gonna know. For once, I'm gonna know something. You join me? I really don't want to be alone for this. Huh. Why the fuck not? <laughs> okay, let's do it. Yeah. You know, I don't think God can love everyone. If he did, it wouldn't mean anything. I know you love something because you know what hate is. And fear, and love isn't any of those things. If he feels, if he's truly anything like us, he, he holds grudges. He changes his decisions. He can take things too far or not far enough. I guess that's what I'm banking on. And some part of God is just vicious and petty and eccentric and short-sighted enough that he can understand us. Even if we aren't human. I hope. I believe he's better. Last chance, Courtney. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> oh. Oh, there it is. The sun. The little bits and pieces of the Bible I read. There's one part that always stuck out to me. It's about this guy named Moses. He was a, a prophet, a leader. Him and God were on really good terms, apparently, but when he asked to see God's face, God said he couldn't. That's that if someone looked at him directly, they would die. You're already dead, Courtney. I'm not committing suicide. I really don't believe I am. I'm just gonna see him, Courtney. I'm gonna see God's face. I'm gonna find out if he loves me. My God. I was right. It's beautiful. Huh. 
Ah. Hmm. Open airlock. Oh. Well. Hello. That was bleak as fuck. I didn't get the final implication. Was it meant to be that we... I'm not sure I got the final not? implication either. Okay. I, I, I think... I th I or, think, if I'm reading it right, Beatrice was um, was meant to be human there at the end. Yeah, because it looked like there was a person coming out of that area. Yeah, that was kind of slumped over. Although the only thing that makes me um, second guess that is the fact that it, that um, the game used the word androids and not just AI. Mm -hmm. And android generally implies some kind of physical body anyway. Huh. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. Well, that was unexpectedly poignant. I really loved that. Yeah. Holy shit. That was neat. Do you want to play it again, but this time in red? Yes. Excellent. You are a bear. Unrealistic. More of a twink, really. <laughs> Reminds me of the uh, opening to the uh, seminal Twine game, uh, You Are a Horse. True. But with the notable twist that this time instead we are... A bear. A bear. A cool bear. You are a cool bear. Holy fuck, this just revved into overdrive immediately. You are a really, really cool bear. I'm not sure I can handle this. You are the coolest of bears. Holy sh... I, this is going from 0 to 11 real quick. You're a bear. Acknowledged Verdom. Acknowledged. You have a tiny tail. Oh. Wait. You're still quite proud of. I mean, it is my tail, so, I, you know, I'm proud of it. As a, as a bear, I'm proud of my tiny tail. Small, keen eyes. With mus wide, muscular paws. And soft, rippling brown fur. Ripple, ripple. Are you rip? Yep. Yeah. I'm rippling. Vivian is rippling her fur on my <laughs> shoulder. Admire fur! Let's do it. Let's admire. Hmm! Very admirable. Please take uh, time at home to, in order to admire your fur. Yeah. Wait. Why would your fur be rippling? <laughs> question the nature of fur and by extension existence itself within our limited mortal perception ah your fur isn't rippling it's waving it's waving because you're plummeting plummeting thousands of feet above an island in the pacific ocean towards a tiny skylight in a tiny facility nestled beside an active volcano ha huh. Try not to die. Okay. Dr. Zed voice. Yes, let's try not to die. As a bear, you do not find your certain death all that unusual. What you do find unusual is that you're wearing a bow tie. Once you do reach this facility, even if you don't die in a horrific agony, what happens next? What dark secrets lay untold in your distant past? What kind of bear are you? beginning to consider who you really are you feel like you're being transported transported to another place a place of wonder that opens also happens to provide convenient background information you're being transported to a flashback, flashback. suddenly you're in your college dorm room eating with your bear dad in strained silence it's a whole lot of uh, setting right there. <laughs> Bear Dad glares at you from across the cheap metal table. So, <clears throat> this is nice. Your, your mother and I expected more from you, you know. More? How much more? Do you know this will be the third time you've changed your major? Big decision, isn't it? Third 
time. Did I have time? <coughs> Isn't this the time? This is the most important decision I've ever made. What do you want from me, Bear Dad? Bear Dad sighs heavily. Look, I'm not trying to get on your case. Your mother and I, we just... I... I what? Oh. Big ellipsis. Huh? Not a ellipsis. Oh, now it's an ellipsis. Oh. Dad? I cannot. Bear. <laughs> the thought of you ending up like me. A dad. <laughs> Bear dad is just an antinatalist. Right? It's your line. Seriously, dad? It's a large weight to... Bear. I know. Dad. I do it because I... Bear leave in you. Why are you using this moment to say puns? You have to be better. Whoa! Whoa! Flashback time is over. <laughs> the bulletproof, bulletproof, bulletproof glass of the skylight breaks your fall, which was unfortunately not bearproof. <laughs> Duly noted. Duly bears <laughs> more powerful than bullets. You heard it here first. You smash through it, shattering the glass. A soft, squishy object crumples beneath your hurtling bare body, absorbing the rest of the impact as you land on the concrete floor. Considering your situation as of four seconds ago, this is actually quite comfortable. Inspect squishy landing pad. You don't want to take a... Uh, all right. Climbing to your feet, you move off the squishy thingy and lean back on your rump. The object that cushioned your fall was a human being. A bit more flat and uh puddly than it must have been before well, nothing that can be fixed with a bicycle <laughs> pump or something though right yeah uh make sure no one's away from look around casually seems you've landed in the center of a warehouse adjoining the main facility except for you the <coughs> body and a few neglected motivational posters the space is completely empty Hang in there, says the frightened kitten. We must dismantle capitalism, screams the blood-stained panda. You can do it, says the cartoon starfish, smiling. I love the one that does not fit. That's great. <laughs> Judging from the heavy marks covering the floor, a lot of something was moved from here recently. Come to a conclusion? Something is happening. Here. Now. <laughs> Something that might even be important. If you're going to unravel the mysteries of this facility, your past, or your current situation, you're going to need to blend in. Speaking of blending in, that body isn't using its face. Hell yeah, time for face pizza. <laughs> you beat me to it. I was going to make the face pizza joke, but then you beat me to face pizza. We going undercover or going commando? Why not both? We gotta pick one. Uh, definitely the one that involves wearing somebody else's face. <laughs> Little does the bear know that in this very facility, there are only four people. <clears throat> Three people. Tell me more excited announcer person. Elsewhere in the facility. Carla, chief security officer of the facility, bursts into the command center and presses a large red button. Whoa. The room goes into lockdown, metal shutters slamming over possible entrances and exits, sealing the inhabitants inside. Bailey, chief technician, looks up from his computer terminal and surprises the room is bathed in vivid red light. His terminal is logged into Twitter 24-7, huh? as it should be. 
Bailey asks Carla what is going on, or Carla explains what's going on without prompting. <laughs> Elsewhere in the facility. <clears throat> there is a bear, Bailey. What? Outside of this room, an actual bear wearing a mask of human skin is roaming the halls. Jonathan, head of human resources, bumps his way through the grid of abandoned terminals scattered about the room to confront Carla. Uh, what's this about a bear? Carla responds noticeably agitated, or Carla stares Jonathan down. <laughs> Which one are we going with? Stare down. Stare down? Elsewhere in the facility. <laughs> Jonathan shifts beneath Carla's glare. When I say there is a bear, I mean there is a bear. Did you not see it on the live security feed? It just hit the cafeteria. It's pretty friggin' hard to miss. Look, I always have a feed running in another window. I I just haven't the I haven't been in my I thought Bailey my, I look at him. Jonathan and Carla turn to face Bailey. Twitter is still occupying the majority of his screen. Carla, Jonathan, and Bailey stare at each other. Still elsewhere in the facility. Were you planning to close Twitter? Nah, bro. I'm live blogging this shit. <laughs> Take me back to my bear body. You are a bear. Yes. <laughs> Opening random doors while wearing your excellent skin mask disguise has led you to a cafeteria of some kind. It's large enough to seat dozens. Industrial tools equipped to feed a number of far larger glitter behind immaculate steel counters. However, a fine layer of dust coats every tile and table. The days when this place were u was used are long gone. Hmm. Investigate seeing carefully. Go friggin' nuts or food, 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 food. What if we investigate? Investigate scene carefully. You creep around the edge of the room on all fours, sniffing the abandoned scene for clues and watching for signs of surveillance. Perfectly sterile, except for the dust. Exploring the cafeteria, the attached kitchen and the bathroom reveals that the cameras smother every available inch of ceiling space. Those who worked here must have been watched day and night. Everywhere they went. Despite the eerie circumstances, you find the toilet paper reserves and refrigerator are fully stocked. Toilet paper reserves? Don't ask. Take a nibble! Of course you wouldn't eat evidence as a responsible bear detective, right? Evidence? <laughs> evidence? I'm a bear! One bite can't hurt. <laughs> Elsewhere in the facility! Carla and Jonathan search around Bailey's monitor to watch the archive footage of your arrival. Carla points at a tiny point on the screen. See? Stop right there. That's how it got in. Isn't that skylight supposed to be unbreakable? I guess it wasn't. Unbreakable. No, 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 no. You got to do it right. Unbreakable. <laughs> it's so much better that way. Don't you agree? I have to lean forward. That's Take true. Effort. Hey, mine's the mine's the bag that hurts and can't lean right now, and I'm still doing it. I'm gonna pretend you didn't say that. Bailey asks Carla why she didn't stop yes. the bear, or the team continues watching the bears. Speaking of forgetting, you never mentioned why you didn't stop the bear. Aren't you the security officer? You see a bear loose, wearing a mask of human skin. You tell me you're gonna fight it? Good point. Computer! Computer enhance. enhance! Speeding up the footage, Jonathan and Bailey turning their heads when you take the human's face, the team tracks you to the cafeteria. That bear is certainly acting odd. Sniffing around, opening doors, looking directly into the camera. You think it knows it's being watched? Based on the way it rooted through our toilet paper supply, the food splattered across the walls, and the fact that it's a 600-pound bear, I'd guess it doesn't care. I hate to be the... Bear. 
er, er, of bad. bad news. Still trying to get over your last pun, Bailey. But we still haven't answered the big question. How do we get rid of it? Jonathan has a fantastic idea. Drugs! Drugs. In any other suspicion, or any other situation, Jonathan screaming this word would be seen as highly suspicious. However, getting locked in a tiny command center tends to make you ignore the little things. With no real control. Wait, what do you mean, drugs? Drugs! Well, not so much drugs as tranquilizers, but still drugs. As in, I'm going to take them. I, are you okay, John? <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan reveals stunning information or hell yeah drugs. <laughs> which one? Which one is it? I kind of want to know stunning information. Okay, so hear me out. Hard to do that when you keep shouting drugs. Regardless, you know about the gallons of hallucinogenic tranquilizers stored beneath the facility, right? What the crap? Oh. So our employer originally built this place to manufacture weapons after the Gulf War. Chemical? Oh, no, that's you, sorry. Chemical weapons. Oh, no, mainly those little foam disc gun things. So, basically what we're still making now. Yeah. Back to the main point! Anyway, in fear that the extreme living conditions... You mean being stranded in the middle of the Pacific Ocean? That's the one. In fear that we might get cabin fever and use the machinery to produce actual weapons and fight our way off of the island... She had hundreds of gallons of tranquilizer gas installed beneath our feet and hooked into the ventilation system. How did you find out about this? My employment contract. Super small print, let me tell ya. Also, when I get bored, <laughs> Wait, you... I hop out of the van. <laughs> you knew before you were hired? Yeah, it was really kind of one of the perks. <laughs> Well, yeah, but... And you agreed to do this... Why? Uh, I like the ocean. On... Bear. Leaveable. Dang it, Bailey! <clears throat> Carla asks when this all happened, or the group makes a decision. Maybe the first. Carla shakes her head. When did all this actually happen? You know those pictures leading to the cafeteria that we used to joke about? Uh-huh. The ones with uh -huh. a massive ice cream party? Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. They used an ice cream party. Bailey, if you turn this into a pun... I was just gonna say... Don't. That was pretty... Do. Not. Cold. Hardened. That was bad, and you should feel bad. <laughs> A decision is made! Carla strengthens to her full height, crossing her arms and looking past her immediate surroundings to evaluate the situation. As tempting as it is to flood our place of work with hallucinogens, I don't feel comfortable unleashing anything more toxic than Bailey's puns in the building while we're still sealed in here. But... In the case of a lockdown, personnel locked in the command center are excluded from any tranquilizer. Jonathan, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but it's just not our best move. For now, we need to investigate other solutions. And wait. As Carla and Bailey explore other possible options and discuss Bailey's crippling pun addiction, Jonathan edges towards his terminal at the back of the room. Watch out, bear me! <coughs> Considering all you, oh, <coughs> wait, I'm dying. No. Mm. Considering all of your hard work earlier, I guess it makes sense that you're now taking it up on the cafeteria floor amongst the food spattered wreckage. You are a bear. 
Uh, Keep sleeping or try to open your eyes. One of these is more in character. Keep sleep. As your slumber and the overwhelming fumes continue to fill your lungs, you feel yourself drifting to yet another flashback. The lurid red warning lights inside the command center have only grown brighter. In the back of the room is an overturned desk and a fallen smoking monitor. Behind the desk, Jonathan is pinned to the wall by Carla. Bailey is frantically checking his Twitter notifications before interfering. What the hell, Jonathan? I was just... I thought if I got rid of the bear... This isn't about the bear, Jonathan. It's about you arbitrarily risking our lives. But, like I told you, the room was spared. We weren't drugged. And what happens after, John? Does the gas leave a residue? Does it stick around? Does it have after effects? Can we leave? Do you know? I... Do you not think I know a fraction about my job? About keeping you and Bailey alive? Carla is crying. Do you not think I care about keeping every single one of you silly, silly people safe? Jonathan accuses Carla. Jonathan's voice is strained. Care? Clark is dead, and you didn't bat an eyelash, even when he had his face taken off. Why do you think you had to watch archives instead of live tape? I was watching when it happened. I mourned before I got here, and I'm still mourning. But I have two more people I need to protect. But you didn't fight. I don't have a gun, John. How do I tell you all what's going on? How do I trigger a lockdown and give us some semblance of safety? To use the very limited hamstrung controls I have, where do I go? A look of guilt and horror spreads across Jonathan's face. You go. You came here. That's right. Bailey speaks up. Uh, guys? I get that this is an important moment and everything, but we have two big problems you all might want to know about. Carla releases Jonathan's as Jonathan as fat tears begin to roll down his face, wiping her own, turns to Bailey. We'll talk later, John. What's up? And if you want me to take this seriously, Bailey, you better not say up dog. Noted. Problem number one is that monitor. The smoke detectors in the command center are especially sense. The sound of a fire alarm bell pounds the walls. A dazzling array of mismatched sprinklers spring from the ceiling, soaking the small room. Bailey continues speaking through a mop of wet hair. So yeah, that was problem number one. I could show you problem number two if my terminal isn't drenched, but it's fairly simple. Last I saw, the bear was moving. Oh boy! You are a bear child. A communal picnic filling the park near your home is in full swing. Children race between the trees in a game they couldn't hope to explain, while their mothers, wives of the community's most influential members, bunch around a single refreshment table. Despite their chummy manner, these women snipe at the less fortunate almost as much as you at each other. And the center of everything is your bear dad. He floats from group to group, and the effect in each is tangible. When he leaves, it's like the air has been sucked out of a balloon. Conversation just becomes talk. Knee-slapping guffaws reduced to tired chuckles. And when he enters a knot of people, he makes them smile the way you only wish you could. Just glancing in his direction gives you, is giving you second thoughts. Are you sure we should be doing this? Oh, sorry. Are you sure we should be doing this? Mm-hmm. Dexter, the leader of the collection of older children you've managed to convince to bring you along, turns to face you. We can always just leave you behind, you know? You don't need to be here. The others also turn to face you. You're feeling the age difference more than ever and desperately trying to make up for it. No, I mean, just won't we miss the rest of the picnic? What is there to miss, Squirt? It's just a bunch of old people standing around talking, a bunch of kids running around doing nothing. Uh, like I said, you don't want to be here? You can beat it. The others nod their heads and mutter a snide agreements as they try to catch up. 
course, they're going to follow Dexter to the small rocky waterfalls at the abandoned edge of the park. The question is, will you? I'll show them or screw those jerks I'm leaving. I'll show them. Yeah! Yeet. <laughs> you follow Dexter's lead and continue to slink away from the hubbub of the, hubbub above of the picnic, scrambling hubbub. under warning tape to hopefully reach the falls. The train becomes more wild and treacherous with every step you take deeper into the abandoned brush. But there's no indication that you're getting any closer to your goal. Hey, Dex. Do you know where you're going? Says a short-winded panda somewhere behind you. Of course I know where we're going, Dexter shouts. <laughs> Good, you kids are impatient. I mean, do you hear that roar? Literally every line, it gets more <laughs> parodic and strange. <laughs> Should I not? There... <laughs> Do you not like it? It's funny. Do you not like me? <laughs> I like you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Listening quite intently, you think you can hear an owl yawning in a nearby tree before going back to sleep. Yeah, Dex, can't hear nothing, says the panda who is rapidly moving up Dexter's hate list. He's a quiet ruler, Dexter mutters. Are you guys coming or not? <sighs> Okay, I regret making it this obnoxious. Now I'm going to dial back the obnoxiousness. Okay. <laughs> the group has been wandering for at least an hour when you encounter a bush that refuses to move aside. You ch your chance irritated swipe at said shrubbery reveals a sight that leaves you gasping. Still, just ahead of the now decapitated plant is an abrupt drop leading directly into a bubbling lake ringed by sheer cliffs. Towers of running water burst from the wildflower-covered rocks, sending waves of mist spiraling into the air in an intricate, shifting patterns. You don't know it now, but you'll compare everything you see in this, to this moment for the rest of your life. You don't even notice Dexter taking the credit for your discovery. A series of bear children racing past you to dive into the water. Okay, Dexter screams, already claiming the loftiest perch available by proxy. Go wild! <clears throat> Investigate a beautiful flower at the edge of a cliff. Except to dare to dive from the highest waterfall. Try to swim with the others. What do we do? Investigate. Investigate! Pulls out Barb's magnifying glass. That's mm. okay. It seems investigation is in your nature. A particularly vibrant wildflower on one of the more precarious cliffs catches your attention. You edge along the cliff face, bending so you can observe the bloom without <laughs> plucking it. The last thing you remember is falling and the flower disintegrating under a torrent of water. You go underwater. You stay there. No one notices. You come out of a black haze to find yourself heaving water on a small dry patch of land at the lake's edge. It's almost evening, and, a dark heavy and dark heavy clouds are gathering on the horizon. Everyone is gone. I have to get back. Wait, wait, wait. If, this, if the sprinklers are on in here, do they get activated throughout the entire facility? Uh, actually, I don't... Suddenly, Bailey, here's the light pattering of water on the metal shutters outside the command center. Yep. Yeah, that's what happens. Jonathan, do you remember our contracts? Some parts? Why? Carla brushes her thick braids aside. Because I have a plan. And it depends on whether we can find out how those drugs react to water. Wet paperwork search time, yay! Not Bailey attempts to make a pun. Wet paperwork search time, yay! It's been hours. It's been hours and it's raining. It's been hours, it's raining, and it's getting dark. It's been hours, it's raining, it's getting dark. And no one knows where you are. It's been hours. It's raining and it's getting dark and no one knows where you are and you f hear unfamiliar disturbing noises deep within the forest. Bear Dad is gonna kill me. And those noises sound... Like dubstep. <laughs> Carla. <laughs> Wait, what are we doing? Whoop, right. I think I found something. What did you find? The tranquilizers are actually water-soluble. Apparently, our employer wanted to be able to just hose us out of the building once we were finished going out of our minds. That's actually really disturbing. Wait. If the tranquilizers dissolve on contact, that means we could leave. Right, Carla? That isn't exactly what I had in mind. With a few short strides, Carla slams her palm on the large red button, ending the lockdown and opening the small metal shutters, sealing the team inside. What are you doing? Hopefully, 
and giving us more than one chance to stay alive. Jonathan and Bailey have definite questions. Blood and rain stain your fur. Your clothes are torn from stumbling on rocks and thorns and vines in the uneasy half-light, but that doesn't matter. You've reached the park proper and standing in the middle of the clearing, alone, is Bear Dad. He's soaked. You take a hesitant step closer. Dad? He turns slowly and simply looks at you for a moment, like he's confirming you're real. Seemingly satisfied, he walks toward you with stiff, halting steps. A single vein pulses along his snout. Back away or stay still. Back away. Step backwards, but there's no indication of surprise on his face. No undue pain or concern. Just an unreadable black hole of emotion. Dad. You shout. He doesn't answer. Run. Are you sure this will work? No. See these cracks on the floor beneath where the shutter came down? If we can lure the bear beneath one of those doors and initiate another lockdown, the shutter will go down with enough force to trap it, if not kill it. Wait. Kill it? I'm all for fighting, but no one said anything about killing it. Carla sighs. Look, I really, really do not like the idea of killing anything, let alone the bear. Even the, well, Clark thing seemed like it was an accident. I do want to be prepared, though, which is why I'm going to need you and Bailey to grab a chair. Jonathan and Bailey retrieve the nearest sitting devices. You slip on a wet rock. Nothing changes. Bear Dad isn't going faster. Bear Dad isn't going slower. He just keeps coming. The vein keeps pulsing. He's almost within arm's reach. Strike out, crawl away, or freeze. I don't know. You gotta pick. No. Hurry. Hard mode activated. <laughs> freeze. Freeze! Carla and Jonathan are moving a large piece of furniture into place while Bailey keeps watch. So, just to be clear, we are not trying to kill the bear. Ideally, no. This works well to trap it in the room or be separated from it by two plates of four inch thick metal. The tricky bit is that we have to know where the bear is and deal with it in some way before we can move on. Is it possible that the bear isn't actually hunting us or something? Carla drops the desk she was carrying with Jonathan, smashing his foot. Fuck. What did you say? I said, fuck. I'm sorry, but that hurt, Carla. I'm sorry, but I didn't... <sighs> Bailey, Bailey, what did you just say? Are you seriously telling me that I'm the only one who considered that the bear might not be actively trying to kill us? You're completely still. Perhaps in hopes that, like a dinosaur, he wouldn't be able to see you. It doesn't work. The bear dad picks you up by the scruff of your neck and straightens, bringing you to eye level. His voice is slow and calm, even as the vein in his snout pulses faster. You want to tell me where you went? No. Screw you, bear dad. Bear or dad? Bear. You regret the words even as you speak them. Bear dad's eyes grow hard and cold. He pulls you into a tight, furry hug. Um, I'm... I'm sorry. Wait, was that you or was I that... Know. I thought that was bear dad. Yeah, I don't know. It's unclear. It's unclear. It's whomever. All planning and preparation has stopped. Bailey, Jonathan, Carla scream theories, accusation, calls to order, even as the sprinklers pump water into every inch of the facility. Meanwhile, a bear, you of course, limps blindly towards the nearby staircase. That is you, okay. I didn't mean to, really. You're going to listen. You're going to listen very carefully. Do you understand? But I... Is so whatever you're about to say an excuse or a reason? It's a re- Shut up. Sh shut up. He squeezes you tighter. You don't- Oh, wait, that's you again, sorry. You don't understand. Oh, is this me? 
I don't know. It's unclear. You have no idea what went through my head. What your mother felt. You know, I knew how much I wanted to fucking hurt you. Pain shoots through your spine as he squeezes even harder. If it let me keep you safe from yourself. First time you notice his massive claws digging into your back. I really am sorry, Dad. No. No, you aren't. But you will be. Alone. Fair Dad abruptly releases you, sending you falling, flailing to the ground. He steps back and looks at you for a single agonizing moment before trudging away. That's the worst part, really. Not the pain, but the crushing silence after. He trudges through the waterproof tent at the entrance of the park, where the party is still in full swing. It's a long walk home for the confused little bear standing in the rain. Alone. What the hell is this game? I don't know, but it's amazing. It killed Clark and took his freaking face. Tore apart the cafeteria. Has it ever occurred to you that an animal that fell from the sky into a totally unfamiliar place might just do stuff? And Clark was just standing there taking inventory. Even Carla said it was an obvious accident. Please don't bring me into this. We don't even know how or why the bear got here in the first place. Why aren't we asking obvious questions before taking action ourselves? So, if I was an animal and accidentally fell from the sky, you'd be cool with me just ripping your face off. They really are harping on the whole ripping the face off bit. Maybe uh, <laughs> face pizza wasn't the way to go. <laughs> I didn't say that. That's exactly what you're saying. It really isn't. I could rip the crap out of your face. Whoa. This is how we die. This is how my life ends. No, <laughs> no one expects the Spanish bear. Quisition. You blink against the fluorescent light. The remnants of your tears are already dissolving in the artificial rain. You seem to have broken out of the cafeteria, crawled across the facility, and climbed up an entire flight of stairs while you're in your drug-induced flashback. Impressive. High five. In a small room to your right, through a doorway half-filled with half-stacked furniture, you can see a pale, nervous human with a light brown hair apologizing to his co-worker for implying he might rip his face off. He is really is very sorry for a lot of things, apparently. I wonder how the equally pale glasses-wearing human he is apologizing to can see from under a tangled mop of black hair. Occasionally, he'll look at a cold coffee mug overflowing with water behind him and sigh. Off to one side is a lightly muscled, darker human with two thick brown braids spurring her head in her hands. She seems to be regretting the life choices that led her to this point. All of them look drenched as you feel. All of them look as drenched as you feel, which makes it quite the coincidence that this is the moment that the sprinklers decided to stop soaking the building. Wait. It's been a very difficult day for Carla. She's been in a, seen a co-worker killed in a freak bear accident. She's gone through quite possibly the worst team-building exercise ever conceived with her remaining co-workers. She wants these people become friends, then become enemies, then become friends again within five minutes. She looked to find the sprinklers off in a bow-tie wearing bear watching her from the hallway on its back. She's cold and wet and tired. It feels way too old for this shit and does so the... And so does the only thing her exhaust mind can think of while facing imminent death. <laughs> Wave. What's up? The darker human to see you, and rather than assaulting you for past incidents, she's waving. It wouldn't do to be impolite. Way back. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Okay. She's freaking out now. Oh, God. Okay, maybe waving back wasn't the best idea. Oh, dear. Maybe waving again will calm things down. Do a sexy <laughs> bear pose and wink at the camera. There is no camera. Wink anyway. <laughs> Ten feet away. Bailey, Carl, and Jonathan back against the far wall. Thanks to an unfortunately dropped desk, the doorway next to them is blocked by collapsed metal chairs. I'm telling you, it waved at me. That doesn't explain why it's winking at us. Is anyone going to ask why you waved in the first place? If you haven't noticed, John, it's been a long day. The bear stand on its hind legs. Oh god, it's getting into attack position. It isn't a freaking spaceship, Jonathan. You don't know that. This isn't going well. 
Okay. The humans clearly aren't reacting very well. What are you going to do? Whoa! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait. Order a candy gram, offer flowers, bear hug him, change your name, grow a beard, and live out your life in a bear country. Pizza party, invoke the power of the Dark Lord, Bear Thulu. Invoke the power of the Lord Justice, Bear Timus. Propose a game of catch. Interpretive dance. Smoke bomb. Leave and join the circus as a key. Oh, damn it. Before you or one of the more level-headed humans on the other side of the room can do anything, the pale, nervous human takes a deep breath and launches himself towards you. Sounds a little like this. It has no meaning in any known language. Hey, hold on a minute. Slams into your stomach head first, and after recovering from the initial shock, begins pounding the sides of your bare body with his fists. This is no effect whatsoever. No one else is going to die today, bear. Mop-haired human shouts from across the room. You do realize that statement would apply to the bear, too, right? Not helping, Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> do we pat the nervous human or wave at the other humans again? I think we wave at the other humans again. This has been a very strange day for Carla. She saw a co-worker killed in a freak bear accident. She watched her colleagues become friends, become enemies, and then become friends again. She looked into the eyes of a bear and it waved it, and saw it, waved at it and saw it wave back. She felt the slight tremble in the drywall as Jonathan pushed off of it into thro to throw himself at a bear. She heard Bailey gasped as his frenemy did something indescribably stupid. And now? Now she's questioning something that the vast silliness of the entire day as the bear lets an exhausted friend lean against its gigantic body. It's waving at her again. Carla comes to a conclusion. <laughs> I'm not even going to try measuring distances at this point. Guys? Jonathan speaks drunkenly through a mat of wet bear fur. I'm a little busy here, Carla. Let it go. We're... I think we're safe. So you're saying it's... Barely. A threat? Really? Puns are high, cope with the void, okay? Plan. The nervous human, who you've come to learn is named Jonathan, resting in a nearby chair, it seems you are all in a position to finally find a way off of this island. So Rational Bear, what you suggest to the group? <laughs> Tea party. Yes. <laughs> Through a complex series of hand emotions and eyebrow wiggles, you manage to communicate that you believe tea is needed before making such a major decision. In spite of their initial concerns, including Bailey's insistence on coffee, the humans actually agree with you. Recognizing your negative experiences in the cafeteria, Carl suggests you all use the staff break room instead. <laughs> This is how three frazzled humans and a bear ended up celebrating the discovery of a usable electric kettle in a tiny room on a foam disc gun manufacturing facility in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Tea time! Oof. The hardest This is the choice. hardest of deci- <laughs> uh, uh, Want some honey? Nice. You had a delicate half spoonful of honey to your coffee and stir it in. Drink coffee. For a brief moment, just before you raise your glass to your lips, you can feel the universe judging your beverage choices. Sip. <sighs> you and Bailey are about to move on to your third cups when Carla clears her throat. So has anyone thought of where they want to go from here? I'm... I'm not sure I'm in the best place to make decisions right now. That's understandable. Bailey? Seriously? No puns? Please. Bailey sighs and shrugs his shoulders apologetically. I mean, today was certainly odd, but I'm not sure I care where I go. I'm with you guys. What were you thinking? I wanted to get everyone's opinion first. Carla turns to you with a thin, tired smile. How about you, Bear? Know where you want to? Boom! You race to the front of the facility to find a gaping hole above the reception desk. Unused and very unnecessary reception desk. Because <laughs> it's in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> Hovering above the patched in blue skies, an attack helicopter. So, true, true fact, I just learned I had a Pavlovian response to the phrase attack helicopter. Yeah. I did not know that. It makes perfect sense, but I did not know that. Anyway, continuing. It appears to be piloted by a frail old woman with a shock of white hair, barely restrained by her helmet. She looks pissed. Look at what you made me do. To my business! She screams into the craft's public address system. Fucking run. You knock down the front door of the humans for the humans 
You knock down the front door for the humans and sprint down the beach on all fours, all while being berated by the helicopter following your ragged band. I didn't spend years making this building what it is so you could run wild with your tranquilizer drugs and your sprinklers. Hey, it worked with the bear. Why don't we try talking to her? A burst of gunfire to your left sends, sends sand flying into the air, stinging your throat and lungs. Carla shoots Bailey a brief look. But no! Even when robots are practically doing your jobs, you still invite your wild animal friends and wreck my property! Hey, uh, bear? I know this is a bad time, but can I ride on your back? Hell yeah. I like how you can let him ride or politely refuse. <laughs> sure. Immediately after climbing on your back, Jonathan goes mad with power. I am become Jonathan Har Bear Jer of Destruction, Herald of the Bear Apocalypse, Lord of the Terror and the Furry. Remove Jonathan from your back for his own sake. Carla shouts and points towards a small point in the distance as you all continue sprinting down the beach. It's a boat! There's a pier! There's a boat! Do you have any idea how expensive missiles are? I'm literally shooting your 401ks. You monster. What did you just call me? I, I didn't mean... Oh, I know exactly what you meant. Why did you say that? I didn't know she could hear me. The last thing you remember is another missile screaming from the sky into the dry sand behind you and feeling like falling. Falling. The past. Your heart to heart with Bear Dad has descended into a barely restrained screaming match. You think I tell you this because I don't love you? This isn't a game. You can't reset this. You can't keep changing and changing over your choices and somehow succeed. <coughs> if you keep wasting bits and pieces of your life like it doesn't matter, you're going to fail. I'm not going to fail, Dad. Bear Dad crosses his arms, smirking and cocks an eyebrow. You're not going to fail, hmm? What magic major are you going to choose to avoid that happening? <gasps> choose major. Oh, time to go with realism. Philosophy? Yeah. Hey! Why isn't anyone listening to me? I have serious grievances. Why isn't the bear waking up? Oh. If you already absorbed the drugs, you can get flashbacks at any time, especially in stressful situations. You didn't mention this earlier? Why? I didn't think the best way to start a friendship was to say, Hey, nice to meet ya. By the way, we gave you irreparable brain damage. If no one is going to listen to me, I might as well destroy the boat now. Why do you keep doing horrible things? Because you killed my facility, that's why. You killed your facility. Flail. So your big plan is to get a philosophy degree now. Okay. That's cool. What are you going to do with it? Oof. Oh no, why did we pick this? Gritty realism. I'm having flashbacks now. Choose future career. Ha! <laughs> do we go with probably wow. or definitely? Ouch. That. And already my head is queuing up all the, but actually you could do the, no. Definitely barista. In fairness. Only one of the two of us has served coffee for money. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I have served coffee for money. I serve coffee for the joy of it. Yeah, that's true. Being honest about the state of the economy and subsequently the job market, you joke that you'll end up a barista. This does not go over well. A final fireball erupts from the luxury yacht at the end of the beach as Carla, Bailey, and Jonathan desperately try to revive you. I'm doing this for your own good, you know. It's dangerous to use vehicles that aren't absolutely familiar with... A slipped button press sp sends a spray of sand bucking into the air next to your feet. Carla barely flinches. Whoops, sorry, there's a lot of things to do at the same time. Things to do with the same thing in here. Just let me label this. Fire Gatlings. Number four. Failing. This is really a joke to you? No, I was... Look at, you look at the sacrifices your mother and I made. The dreams we killed so you could have a chance to follow yours. You think that's something to joke about? You feel a hot lump rising in your throat. You know what 
really upsets with me. You won't get a chance to defend yourself. It's not that you made the joke. Whatever you might think, I'm not insane. Your hands are balling into fists. It's that you don't have the slightest idea what you want. He won't understand your hopes of becoming a philosophy teacher. You see, the future has this mysterious, exciting horizon, and that's not what it is. Helping people better understand themselves and the world around them a tiny bit better. The future is dark. The dream you had since you, had since you nearly drowned. It is cold. You did try to tell him once about the confused little bear standing in the rain once. And it will break you unless you are more than prepared. He didn't understand that either. With a little docking of your pace, some elbow grease on that hole in the ceiling, replacement tranquilizers, and the signing of a new extended contract, we should be back in business. Wait. You seriously think we'll keep working for you after this? Why not? You get competitive salaries, full of health and dental. I'll return your 401ks, or well, most of them. Missiles are really expensive. You spied on us for years, put our lives in danger. Shh. Shut up, Bailey. But... If the bear doesn't wake up, we'll deal with her ourselves. The mournful sound of wearing helicopter blades dominates the scene as Carla continues to try waking the bear. The others are keeping their distance. Wisely. Wait for it. I'm not going to watch. He's saying the words in slow motion. You remember this part. Wait for it. The world split my child open. The final word, the capstone of these conversations. The word that drives a blunt, burning nail into your chest, ending the argument and leaving you with a tearful apology far too late. Here it comes. On. My. Fucking. There it is. Fuck. Fuck. Fucking. Fuck. Punctuation on a dark message ricocheting in the mind of a small bear in the rain. The roar that emerges from your lungs is over a decade in the making. No. Wake up. Grab brush, put on a little makeup. <laughs> Carla has finally resorted to pounding on your chest when Jonathan spots your eyelids fluttering. Carla. Oh. Nope, sorry. That was your only line. Carla, I think it's waking up. Carla spins to look at your face. Oh my gosh. It must have been the noise from my chopper. See? I can be pretty rad, right? You know it would be totally tubular if you worked for me since I saved your friend's life. The team glares at the woman in a helicopter. I'll take that as a maybe. <laughs> Fluttering. I'm not gonna fail, Dad. And you will not speak to me like that. Ever. Again. You're snorting, thrashing at the sand, struggling to your feet. Carla, Jonathan, and Bailey hurry aside. I... 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 No, Dad. No arguments. No excuses. No buts. Understand? Bear Dad's jaw hangs ever so slightly, his eyes expressing a confused concern and pain. You stare him down over the metal table, the cheap light flickering above your heads. Flickering. Shaking sand from your fur, you stand erect in the helicopter's gust. You stare into the cockpit with a blank cold light still flickering in your eyes. Your body is here, but your mind is thousands of miles away. Why is it looking at me like that? If it makes any difference, Bear, I didn't mean to hurt any of you. Carla looks from you to the helicopter and back. I mean, I wanted you to hurt Lil, but nothing serious. Bear? That looks like half an emoji, and I love it. He... Bear Dad takes a deep breath and collects himself before speaking. His voice is quiet, every word deliberately placed. You do realize that I pay for this room. I'll move. And the degree? I'll get a job. Take classes part-time. You want to take me out of your life that much? Carla! Carla, dear! 
haven't even seen you before today, especially considering what's happened. I think deer is premature. Ah, uh, yes, despite that, the, the bear. What? What are you doing? Where do you go from here? A brief amount of time has passed. You're throwing clothes and mis miscellaneous keepsakes into a hand-me-down suitcase. I honestly don't know. You think that's a good plan? To leave your future at risk because you can't focus? Take your jacket off its hanger in the bedroom closet and the hard weight inside its pocket knocking against your arm as you swing it over your shoulder. Because you can't deal with a little tough love now and then? As you exit your bedroom and head for the front door, you notice the light is still flickering over the table. What do you think the real world is going to throw at you? Especially if you become successful. Are you going to run then too? Next to the door is a small framed photo of Bear Dad. Outside of some digital photos and a kitsch electronic frame your grandmother sent you once, it's the only physical image you have of him. He's watching you. Take it or leave it? Take it. Take it? Take the picture and shove it in the front pocket of your suitcase before opening the door. Bear Dad calls your name. Please. Listen one last time or leave? I don't know. Maybe we listen. I don't know. All right. What are you going to do? I'm going to make it work, Dad. Last thing you remember seeing as you close the door is Bear Dad's scared, tired eyes following you until the door shuts on the last crack of flickering light. I'll make it work. You blink hard. Tears. Lots of those today. Surrounded by worried faces and looking into the eyes of the woman who sent you back into your past. Wounds irritated by sand and sea spray sting beneath your matted fur. You reflect. You feel reflective as you recognize a familiar weight around your neck. Examine bow tie. You reach on the back of your neck and carefully undoing the bow tie's metal clasp. The back of the delicate silk tie is a large metal weight. I don't know what you're doing, Bear, but if you try any funny business, I'll blow you to smithereens. Look up at the woman once again, ignoring the cries and arguments of your newfound companions. You hear me? I'll do it. I will. No, she isn't going to hurt anyone else. Make it work. Your name is Patricia Herning... Herningsen? Herningsen? Did I pronounce that correctly? I don't know. Patricia Herningsen. You're 62 years old. You spent your life proving being eccentric doesn't have to mean being unsuccessful. You need a boutique foam disc gun manufacturing facility in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. A sustainable business. You brought parachute pants back into style. You manage a multinational technology conglomerate through a series of shell companies at the comfort of your living room. You fly a variety of aircraft to intimidate your rivals. The salty torrent of their fevered tears driving your ceaseless fury. The red crescent of the blood moon shining on the face of swords of your dark army. The raging abyss rising to greet the supposedly sane. The grinning Darth mask of their own futile... <clears throat> <clears throat> Your well-adjusted adult who survived the 70s to become a force of nature is what I am saying. Then today happened. You've watched the inhabitants of the, f of the facility for some time now. Idly, like Bugs in a Jar or a TV show that you don't particularly mind getting canceled. Then you saw a bear smash through your skylight and destroy your cafeteria, fill your building with, for all intents and purposes, drugs, flooded by sprinklers you installed to protect it. You acted. You flew in an attack helicopter to kick some butt and put things back in order. In that order. Then you arrived and everything changed. The employees, the bugs in a jar, they became people with emotions and friendships and occasionally serious issues. For the first time in a long while, you found yourself caring about these people. Wanting to be liked by them, regretting your first impulse. So I'm definitely having more issues than those. The bear happened. Then there's the odd business of this bear. It crushes Clark one moment and waves at your employees the next. Takes off his bow tie and stares deep into your eyes before hurling it into your helicopter's rotor, sending you spinning out of control. Now you're in a crashed helicopter next to the facility you lovingly built with your own hands. You lovingly built by hiring some really quite lovely contractors, watching a heavy furry shadow limp toward you with cold, hard eyes. A single vein pulses along its snout. Just when life began to seem less lonely, the other humans are yelling in their way about something or another. That doesn't matter right now. Trapped below you in the cockpit of the crashed helicopter is the woman who hurt you. Who destroyed that last avenue of escape for you and your friends. Who threatened to destroy you. She looks scared. You are a bear. You are a college student. You are a child standing in the rain. You are taking his picture with you. You are you. And we're going to make it work. <laughs> right now, business mogul Patricia Herningsen is watching her helicopter explode from atop a bear's back. For a moment, she almost believes she's a kid again. Spilling wet, sticky cotton candy all over her daddy's shirt on some distant beach. What now? You watch the helicopter burn. It's not really that odd. 
It's a long day, and for some reason, the sight of twisted charring metal and the quiet understanding of fellow warm bodies is what you all needed. You certainly don't need speech to understand why all the humans lean on you, or how the older one fell asleep on your back. There's a hole in the roof of the facility, and of course, all the equipment you could use to call for rescue is soaked, but right now, right now, in this moment, you're surrounded by a group of unique people who have come to care about each other and about you. You believe you'll make it work somehow. And you do. P.S. When the hangar is clean, its worn oil spattered away, the planes are buffed to a blinding gleam. Blinding gleam. You almost leave for fear of spoiling them with your mortal breath. Y'all wanting something? Calls a booming voice from the recesses of the massive space. A job, actually. The owner of the voice steps out from behind a beautifully preserved twin engine craft. He's a panda, white fur steamed, black with grease and labor, black fur running with gray and age. However, his heft does little to disguise the speed of his steps or the energetic gleam in his eye. He looks over your battered clothes and torn shoes, been hitchhiking for weeks, and it feels like you walked for longer. Wah! He says, chewing on his bottom lip in concentration. If you're looking for a job, I don't suppose you'll mind my asking the circumstances of your employment. Well, I'm a hard worker. I hear that quite a bit. I completed two years of a failed college education. That's a mite more rare. I've traveled hundreds of miles to get here. Well, that, he says, leaning on his rump and wiping his forehead with the back of his paw, is darn near unheard of. Mind if I ask you why? Would you believe me if I said it was for a new star? I'd say so, but then I'd probably think you'd kill somebody at some point. That might get uncomfortable after a while. Okay, then. It takes a few minutes to reduce a complex mix of feelings into a coherent answer. I was at a gas station when I saw your card on the ground. Someone had stamped it halfway under the mat for the slushy machine. I think we can hold off on some of that detail. Oh, well, um, the card said, Experience True Freedom. I wanted that. I wanted to feel what it was like to be free, just for a minute. I don't think anyone really feels like that. Not long term, anyway. Doesn't hurt to try, though, does it? The bandit looks up for a while at nothing in particular. Wah! Sorry to say you're gonna need some more schooling. The pilot's license and such, you understand. He sighs. But before you get in the air, you'll probably want to know how not to die. Go on, grab a wrench from that wall over there. Got something to show you. Doesn't matter which. Most of them are for show anyway. You grin and start for the wall. You'll make it work. You will always make it work. Somehow. Hey. Jesus Christ, that game! That was fucking awesome! That was amazing! Holy shit! What the hell did we just play? <laughs> what the hell was that? What the hell was that? <coughs> oh my god. Jesus! What a good game. That was amazing! Hey, thanks, patrons, for picking awesome people for us to play games from. Yeah. Really? Like, holy crap. I just kind of picked this one on a whim because we needed something else to round out the episode. And holy shit. <laughs> that was surprisingly poignant for a game about a bear and puns. Damn. Damn. Aw, I got thanked. All right, so first things first, uh, I'm going to need an Oddish uh, just to <laughs> trade over to, because uh, what, we got a Bellsprout last time? Yeah, So we, we uh, got to trade between Can Android's Play versions red and blue to get the version exclusive mons. I mean, if you just spell out the joke like that. Then <laughs> I was going to leave it implied, but you know, if you, uh, all right. All right, guess what? You get to do this one. Okay. So you you better this. be loud. I'm always extremely loud. You're never loud. The one thing, good thing that's going to come <laughs> of us having a new recording setup is that I'll be able to hear you. Oh, that is... Mm. That's an okay thing. Well, no, I can hear you. I mean, they can hear you, too. Other people are listening. Did you know there are other people on the end of this microphone? They're sitting inside it right now, listening to you. No, don't, don't, <laughs> not, well, no. I... I regret giving Free you... Free them! No, I... Mm. Free them! I've got so many regrets right now. <laughs> so 
Someone help me out here. I think I'm feeling just about ready to inherit the earth. Now I've got Rush stuck in my head. <laughs> oh hey, that's that same hillside. Yep. It has artillery and shit. Mm-hmm. So is this opening monologue then meant to be Beatrice reading to herself? Maybe? Oh. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Interesting. Gotta say, though, I really love, like, how evocative it is with just a bunch of, you know, like, very detailed, but, like, still monochrome polygons. Yeah really cool another great entry in the long tradition of emotional mech fiction oh huh seeing god was referenced in the opening bit as well mm -hmm. yeah oh, the good old blessed are those you can tell I didn't spend enough time in Bible camp because I can't remember which verse that is. Nice. Your turn. Your fuel line's cut, dumbass. I love the font. It looks kind of Star Wars, but also kind of not. I like it. Your fuel line's cut, dumbass. All right. I'm going to play very differently than you. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, what you going to do? Uh... I think you did this one too, but I like it. That's correct, I did this one too. Fuck my giant metallic body. Right now? Even if we didn't have to worry about corrosive air, or not having supplies, or not having long range comms, or not having shit fuck all when it comes to surviving past tomorrow, we're doomed. My arm servos are locked, private. Judging from the condition of your mech, you aren't moving from that spot either. No matter what we do, or what we say, or what we want, your fuel tank's gonna blow us sky high. It'll happen just as the sun rises. Should be beautiful. Why did you chase it? Soldier? It's our job. Sure, it's my job, but that doesn't mean I have to chase a 40G9 buckshot hog into a fucking canyon. It has buckshot in the name. What did you think would happen? Jeez. I... I blame you. This is your fucking fault, Private. Oh, fuck you. I do not want to die. I really, really don't want to die. And if I was going to die anyway, I would have wanted to plan it. I would have eaten whatever I wanted. I would have tried one of those Vert Classic programs instead of rewatching Mecha Mates. What do you think Mecha Mates is like? I don't know. I would have tried reading at some point. Maybe not that last one. So if reading is optional, how do you think uh, the the UI and the mechs works? I don't know. I am having trouble with my imminent death. The civility filter seems to be picking up on that. On the bright side, I guess it will go before we do. Shit. I'm sorry. Want to know something funny? Hmm. No, I don't. Wow. Just leave me the fuck alone. Well, I'll keep that little tidbit to myself then. We're about to die though, so... For better or worse, I'm the last voice you're gonna hear. You're the last voice I'm gonna hear. I'm glad we're both here for each other is what I'm trying to say. Well, that's me. Oh. That was my only line! Oh. 
Well, at least we're taking one of those MP fucks with us. Good riddance. I, uh... I'm not certain we did that. You know how chain of command works. When Captain Boronar went down, I had to pick up his... You know I asked for this detail. <laughs> I volunteer to do something just once and it kills me. Sure learned my lesson. I mean, fuck. Nobody thinks about the Mercury Protectorate. Command didn't project a single casualty. Vert networks were already fighting over the streaming rights. That's how much of a cakewalk this was supposed to be. We were supposed to stomp them. MPs aren't supposed to have advanced ma enhanced max. Enhance. MPs aren't supposed to have giant ass bombs. <laughs> giant ass. <laughs> You're right. MPs generally don't have giant ass bombs. That's save for the uh, the House of Lords. <laughs> <laughs> hey -o! I don't get it. Instead of instead of oh well. What? Instead of PMs. I, 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 there were several steps that led to that joke. All right. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Okay. There were several leaps of logic that happened very instantaneously in my head. Okay. That do not make any sense. In any case, I guess they do now, though. Look at me. Oh, I get it. Members of Parliament. <sighs> yes. That yes. was funny. Can't even move my arms. <laughs> Clearly, you can still chat. <laughs> Anyone ever tell you you got away with words private? Because they might have been lying. Yeah, probably. We really are going to die, you know. The air in this sector is toxic. Without fuel or battery packs, our life support is going to run out. Also, you're going to explode, so that's a problem. They used to call this Planet Earth. I watched documentaries about it. They were called Planet Earth. <laughs> the sunsets were supposed to be beautiful. Now that there's all this stuff in the air, the colors and light and stuff, it's to die for. Kind of overrated from where I'm sitting. Doing everything I can to shut down conversation. <laughs> -do 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 -do. <laughs> Do you ever think about God? <laughs> <laughs> nah. Nah, fan. <laughs> I think about God a lot. Glad that's not going to deter you. I try not to, but I do. Are you there, God? It's me, Beatrice. I made that joke already. <laughs> I made it again. All right, fine. There's this person, thing, that can see everyone and everything. Made good and evil. Made the universe confusing. I keep thinking and trying to understand him, and it's... God is... What do you think God is like? I really don't think about it, Beatrice. Okay, I get where you're coming from. Here's the thing. I think God is terrifying. I'm used to being monitored and judged by people who don't give a fuck about me. We're in the military and we've still got it easy. Shit, the Venusian Confederacy is just 1984 with an anime mascot. I get apathy. What scares me about God, what keeps me up at night, is that God might care. That he's seeing all of this, all of me, and has feelings about it, about all of us. Feelings we can't even comprehend. 
a sentient mind that processes fucking everything and can do something about it and does do things, maybe, but you can't tell when, or maybe you can, but you just... You... You... At night, when I get out of Vert, I look up at the stars and hope whatever eyes or eye that God has brushes over me. Seems squelchy. I don't want anyone to brush their eye on me. I'll do it. Squelch. Get on it. Ah, oh, my glasses are in the light. <laughs> Never mind. I was I, wearing protection. <laughs> I feel ashamed for feeling that way, but it's true. Stop looking at me. Stop feeling. Please. Got it on your system? You, you done now? Not really. I'm guessing you don't want to hear this. Hmm. Just got my own stuff going on too, okay? Oh. Oh man, I'm so sorry. I didn't even think to ask. How are you holding up? What's going on with you? I'm dying. It's hard to pick any one thing. Wish you could fire my gun, though. Take this out on something, somehow. I'm a bit of a downer. Did anyone ever tell you that? As a fellow dying person, I understand what you're saying. Thanks for telling me. When Captain Boronar went down, I freaked out. He taught me everything I know about surviving. Not boot camp bullshit, that's conditioning. I'm talking about the stuff that gets you through this life after an engagement is over, the day after day. The stuff you use to help others do it too. I, I couldn't believe that he was gone. And once I got to his body, I froze because I went through Cap's data log. It wasn't chain of command. I wanted something to remember him by, but I ended up finding, um, fuck it. I've got some existentially terrifying news. How do you want to hear this? Well, you already took the good one, so. What, you mean like good news first or <laughs> something like that? <laughs> something like that. Which is it? That or something like that? Okay, exactly that. Thank you. So, any good news? <laughs> We're, uh, most of us, we aren't human. Do you ever wonder why we don't get to meet people outside of armor? We can't even control the airlocks on these mechs ourselves unless we're in critical condition. We meet, screw, and eat invert because most of us aren't human. For every 1,000 soldiers deployed, exactly seven are physical people, and no one is told which is which, including the AI who think they're regular people. The sensation of getting inside the mech, the alloy steel on your toes, they could fake it. They could. Humans are pattern breakers. That's it. Just enough free thought to keep data centers millions of miles away from identifying calculated attack patterns and slaughtering everything. I don't know if Boronar was human, Courtney. I don't know if he knew. I don't know if he even cared. I can't remember being born. Did people used to remember that? Was it taken away from us so we wouldn't know the truth? Are we the first people to lose the memory of where we came from? To prop up a world built on no one knowing anything? I don't know, Courtney. I don't know anything, and I'm scared, and I'm dying. Holy shit. <laughs> yup. 
If we open our airlocks and we do have physical forms, we'll die. Air's shot. If we don't have actual bodies, we'll still go out when these mechs do, but we won't know what we really are. We're gonna die on a planet people don't even live on anymore. 2087, Interstellar Moving Day to the United Continents. Trivia. I want a trivia night with that fact. It was at a bar. I remember writing down the answer on my tablet so hard that the leather from the dirty booth was vibrating. I can't remember if it was invert or real. I didn't... I didn't care. I... Why in the flying spectacular fuck did this happen? Why did I sign up for this? Why are we here? I'm so sorry for everything. Especially the mean stuff. Boronar could have told me. He could have just told me. I'm not crazy, even if some of our conversation has suggested otherwise. I'm not crazy or irrational for thinking that something exists beyond myself that I can't see or fully comprehend. Look at that sky. Just take a look at that sky. <laughs> I saw how small I am in this universe and thought, something has to fill all that empty space. Someone has to care about us. I do believe that, but now I'm looking up. And when we thumped here in what is basically our graves, I had one thought in my head. Can God hear circuits? It sounds pretentious and absurd, but I thought that. I felt tears on my cheeks and wondered if they were real. I just murdered a man or a machine or something, and I'm crashing here next to his flaming corpse, wondering if God listens to computers. Or does he just drown out the buzzing? You're right. You do sound crazy. <laughs> I'm opening the airlock when the sun rises. I'm going to know. For once, I'm going to know something. I don't expect you to join me, but I'd really appreciate if you did. Will you? Join me, I mean. I would understand if you don't. Wait, fuck all this. Being an AI doesn't make you any less real than someone with a body. This doesn't matter. It matters to me. That's it. I'm sorry. I don't have a better answer for you. To me, this matters. You know, I don't think God can love everyone. If he did, it wouldn't mean anything. You know you love something because you know what hate is and fear, and love isn't any of those things. If he feels, if he's truly anything like us, he holds grudges. He changes his decisions. He can take things too far or not far enough. I guess that's what I'm banking on. Some part of God is just vicious and petty and eccentric and short-sighted enough that he can understand us. Even if we aren't human. I hope... I believe he's better. Last chance, Courtney. I think I'm going to leave this alone. Oh. Oh, there it is. The sun.
Of the little bits and pieces of the Bible I read, there was this one part that always stuck out to me. It was about this guy named Moses. He was a prophet, a leader. Him and God were on really good terms, apparently, but when he asked to see God's face, God said he couldn't. God said if someone looked at him directly, they would die. We are already dead, Corgi. I'm not committing suicide. I really don't believe I am. I'm just... I'm going to see him, Courtney. I am going to see God's face, and I'm going to find out if he loves me. My God. I was right. It's beautiful. Yep, so I think that pr I, after seeing this variation on it, I think that pretty clearly shows that um, she was indeed flesh of being. Okay. Because if she hadn't been, there wouldn't have been anything to flop out, is what she had been getting so, at earlier. Huh. Does that mean that we should make the same decision as last time? Because the difference between the two versions might be that we are this time a robo when we weren't a robo? Maybe. Let's try it. Well. Hello. Huh. Huh. Weird. I don't understand what the difference between version, uh, variation red and variation blue is. One was red. One was blue. I'm okay. not sure I understand the difference either. Um, <laughs> to be to 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 be Q H with you. <laughs> to be quite H. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, maybe it was just something subtler that I did not pick up on. That would be my guess. Um, either way, it means you get two versions of this game. You either get to listen to me being Beatrice or uh, Vivian being Beatrice. Whoa. I know which one I prefer. The one where you're talking more. Oh. Aww. I like you, and I like your voice. I like you, and I like your voice. Oh yeah. You should put them, the voices on YouTube for something someday. Nah, no one will listen to it if they're on YouTube. <laughs> Wait. Is there really someone in there? <gasps> Hello? Free him. Free him! <laughs> And again, thank you to all of our patrons this month who uh, helped vote on whose games we were going to play. Yeah. Yeah, y'all are awesome. If you want to have a vote in who we're playing next month, uh, and by that next month I mean October, which is this month, which I know, I know, <laughs> uh, you can sign up on our Patreon. Uh, there are tiers and stuff. You can give us money. We get to eat for another month, which I'm told is good. Just like real governance money buys influence <laughs> okay big mood right there <laughs> or or you can be a let's play anarchist and not participate and just watch that's fine too that is also fine i don't think we say that often enough that's totally fine we, we are love so love you all regardless we do it means so much to us that we get to do stupid stuff like this and there are people out there who actually watch it yeah. and listen to it Seriously, for those of you who are listening to this moment right now, I don't care if this is your first video with us or if you've watched a bunch of them, but... Or if this is your last. Or if this is your last, <laughs> but... Thanks. Sincerely, thank you. Thank you. It means a lot that you took some time out of your short, finite lifespan to watch two dumb people play a wonderful text-based game on the internet for an hour or so. Thank you. Sin sincerely, thank you. Wanted to have something funny to end that with, and I got nothing. <laughs> I really got nothing.
Are you ready, Seattle? Thank you, good night. <laughs> <laughs>